Okay, welcome back everybody. As I mentioned in my introduction this morning, uh, Michiko Nita couldn't be here because of a sad family affair. Nevertheless, we want to show you the project that she has been working on. It's a kind of a conceptual project, I would say, uh, called Extreme Green Guerrillas. It was her graduation project at the Royal College of London, and I think she might even have been a student of uh, uh, Natalie Yeremienko, I'm not sure. But when I was listening to Natalie, I could imagine. Uh, Michiko doesn't want to wait till policymakers come up with solutions on the urgent ecological issues. Nita's project takes current green trends to the extreme. The extreme green guerrillas are a network of amateur, self-sustaining people who have shortened their lifespan through the ultimate green lifestyle. Whilst going to extreme lengths to protect the environment, they try to enjoy a decadent quality of life by reusing urban waste and biosystems, embracing emerging te technologies in order to develop the ultimate green solution for them. The extreme green guerrillas reject the use of corporate controlled internet or carbon dioxide producing postal services instead preferring to send digital messages via migratory animals and by using RFID tagging strategies. By modifying urban vermin, such as pigeons and rats, they create edible and gourmet-like delicacies. They attempt to solve uh, overpopulation and resource problems through a ritualistic premature death administered via a euthanizing earring. The purpose of these individual provocative gestures is to question the role of consumerism within green activities and to provoke questions regarding green lifestyles. The position the guerrillas represent is realized through an ironic, playful and artistic use of creative, self-explanatory systems. The short video I will show you in a minute is based on three chapters, chapters explaining the lifestyle of an extreme green guerrilla who could be anyone here in the space. Part one of the extreme green, green guerrillas communication system. Extreme green guerrillas are against the use of internet or mobile phones for communication as this method will tie them to big corporations. The extreme green guerrillas are also against conventional postal service as it leaves great uh, carbon dioxide footprints. Instead, Michiko proposes hacking into the animal migration system, giving literal meaning to the phrase snail mill. Part two, the extreme green guerrilla's food. Extreme green guerrilla's food has to be resourced from existing materials within the local area. By modifying the urban vermin, such as pigeons and quails to pig quails, and rats and rabbits to rat it, extreme green guerrillas have created more edible and gourmet-like delicacies based on local available resources in most cities around the world. Part three, the extreme green guerrillas death. The earth is too crowded for sustainability. Therefore, premature death is the ultimate gesture practiced by the extreme green guerrilla. So Michito designed an earring that is ceremonially installed when one turns 20 and that releases a lethal drug on your 14th, birth, 40th birthday. If you know your life will only last 40 years, how would you plan your life? Michiko's point is not to say that her project is the future she wants. Her role is, to more, is more to provoke in a witty way and have people question their lifestyle and get the debate on green issues going. So let us take a look at the video, presented, uh, the video presentation that Michiko Nita sent us called Extreme Green Guerrillas. Can I have the screen here? With the worst climate disaster about to happen, our current green solution is not working. It is only making tiny steps forward. This project takes current green trends to the extreme. It's proposing a community of people called the extreme green gorillas who go beyond the limits of human consumerism. This collective of amateur self-sustaining people believe that we must be extreme to save the earth but still try to enjoy a good quality of life in disaster situations. 
This is their manifesto. It includes Earth is the priority and desire and early death. Within this context, this project explores these three areas of an extreme green gorilla's life. How would we communicate? The extreme green gorillas are against text messaging and emailing because it is integral to the consumer system. Conventional posting is also against their will because it leaves major carbon footprints. Extreme green gorillas send digital messages by using animal migration systems. Here are some examples of messaging vehicles. This is the bird, the fish, and the whale for extra large memory. How animal messaging services work. This map illustrates international messaging services for the UK. Animal messaging services depends on an animal's reliability. Messages from London to New York. Firstly, the Environmental Protection Agency implants RFID tags into whooper swans. Then, extreme green gorillas hack into the birds to send digital messages. The whooper swans bring messages from Britain to Iceland. In Iceland, extreme green gorillas hack into these birds to receive the messages. Then, the messages are passed on to polar bears. The migrating polar bears then transport the messages from Iceland to Greenland. In Greenland, extreme green gorillas hack into the polar bears to receive the messages. Then the messages are passed into migrating salmon. The salmon then transport the messages from Greenland to New York. As well as internationally, they also have a local messaging service by using their own pets and visitor animals. This map shows the patrol route of the boss cat called Kuleino. As extreme green gorillas feel superior to consuming humans, they use them as messaging vehicles by hacking into their commuting system. What would we eat? Although individuals can be healthy by eating good food, this activity doesn't necessarily mean the earth is healthy so to what extremes do we need to go to save the Earth? Extreme Green Gorilla's food has to be sourced from existing materials within the local area. By modifying urban vermin such as pigeons and rats, Extreme Green Gorillas have created more edible and gourmet-like delicacies. One example of this is the hybrid bird called Pig Whale, which is a hybrid of the urban pigeon and the quail. How do we die? When a member of Extreme Green Gorilla becomes 20 years old, his or her ears are pierced with a euthanizing earring. This contains muscle relaxant and a lethal drug. Throughout their life, the inner core of the earring rotates day by day. On their 40th birthday, the muscle relaxant and lethal drug are released through a hypodermic needle, leading to peaceful death. This is a part of the ceremony that extreme green gorillas celebrate when this person reaches adulthood. By promoting a young death, extreme green gorillas can sustain the ultimate green life. If you know your life will last only 40 years, how would you plan it? Even though uh, Mikiko is not here, 
I think uh, she needs an applaud as well. And I think it's, uh, how do you call it, a good video with ammunition.